recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil, sitting next to me is Jeff, and in front of me is Matt. How are you both? I'm doing pretty well. I am doing great as well. Ken isn't here today. That's uh, why we're doing so great. That's why we're doing so great. <laughs> uh, Ken decided, uh, you know, he's a vegan, and he decided to to give milk a try. He saw an ad uh, with an athlete on it with a milk mustache and just felt so compelled. So he's out tasting different They're milks. still doing that? They, they are still doing that. We're going to do one, a triviality one. Oh, milk mustache contest? Milk mustache contest. And if, if you want to send us your own milk mustaches, uh, please send us uh, those to our email. But uh, Ken is trying some different... Not the actual mustaches, though. Just the pictures. Just the pictures. Uh, yeah. And Ken is trying to be a milk sommelier. But we were talking before we recorded <laughs> that as kids, and I'm sure mm-hmm. this is depending on your generation, we always had milk at dinner regardless if it was like steak. Well, I think it was the commercials where the little scrawny kid would be like, I wish I had muscles. And then his weird teenage or older version of himself would be like, you better start lifting, bro, and drink your milk. Exactly. That was me. And that's why I had to buy big jugs of whey protein that didn't help me gain weight. You would you would never be able to play the muscled version of your older self, though. No. When I was a kid before my growth spurt, I was like the little kid from Little Giants uh, who had the glasses and <laughs> mm-hmm. wore the bubble wrap. Yeah. Yeah, you're still that kid. I, well, I still, yeah, you're right. I still am that kid. And Jeff, how about you and Milk? What's your relationship like? <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. Well, I, 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 <laughs> it's I, everyone told me I had to try this, uh, this oat milk, but mm-hmm. I was very confused. I accidentally tried goat, goat milk. milk. Mm. Yes, no, 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 no. I, I don't drink it. You don't. I don't it's not a. It's not great podcasting. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. The only oat milk that I like is, uh, is from, uh, I think it's what John Oates, right? From Hall and Oates. Yeah, his, his own, makes you grow a real mustache. Adam Oates. Adam Oates. Yeah, he was the center on the Capitals at one point. Oh, is that true? That is true. He was a hockey player. Adam Oates. Milk. Maybe maybe the person hosting this game knows that. They might. Uh, we have a a great uh, host back in the hosting chair with us uh, after a little bit of a break, uh, but it's really exciting to have them here. They're an Oakland Five supporter on Patreon, uh, coming to us from from Canada, and uh, author of a new book called "The Brain Boosting Trivia Book for Adults: Seven Hundred and Fifty Plus Questions to Help You Flex Your Mind Muscles." Our friend Paul Paquette. How are you, Paul? Excellent, and glad to be with you guys. Yes, glad to have you here. Uh, why don't you tell people who maybe aren't familiar with you a little bit more about yourself and about the book and all the, the fun things that are going on in your life? Yeah, so I'm based in Ottawa, and I've been writing trivia for 20 years, more. <laughs> uh, so I've written for like Trivial Pursuit and all kinds of folks, Uncle John and whatnot. And uh, somehow way that my publisher does books, they do it in reverse. So they marketing people found a niche for this book and developed an outline and then pitched it to me rather than me <laughs> pitching it to them, which is, a, which is an unusual way of doing things. But um, that's why it has such a terrible title. I think yeah. it's, it's an awful, awful title. Um, and well, I thought that I, since it's for adults, I thought there'd be some steamy content, yes. but there wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, usually when you get a title like that, you're thinking it's for elderly people. But when <laughs> I got the outline, <laughs> yeah. when I got the outline, it was really clear that the target audience are millennials and Gen Zers. So it was, a, it, was a, it was an odd sort of experience. I should add, the only way the book could have been better is if the, every question been about Patrick Swayze. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's if true. If only there was a book like that. <laughs> if only there was a book with Patrick Swayze trivia. <laughs> Uh, which I, I actually sent Paul. Paul's one of the first people that got a copy of the book. So Paul got a digital copy of it. I don't even have a digital copy yeah, of we it. We weren't no. allowed then. You weren't allowed it, no. Uh, and Paul, you, uh, you also are the uh, curator, uh, inventor uh, extraordinaire of Trivia Hall of Fame. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, originally, the way it started, uh, this was, again, a very long time ago, is it, it was a weekly gimmick that the people at the top scores on a week, the weekly game online were that week's Trivia Hall of Fame. And then someone suggested it become an actual trivia hall of fame. And it's been, a, because of the pandemic, it's been knocked out for a year or two, but it should come back this year. Uh, but thank you for joining us, Paul, and for being a Patreon supporter. You bet. And our next uh, guest is going to be a contestant today. She's going to be partnering with me. Um, she is an Oakland Five supporter on Patreon, coming to us from Los Angeles. And the reason uh, that I was introduced to the greatest pancakes in the history of the world, and I'll let her maybe talk about that, but uh, it is uh, my friend Amanda Munger. How are you, Amanda? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Uh, why don't you tell uh, people a little bit about yourself? 
Yeah, of course. Um, so my name is Amanda. I also go by Quantum Bat because I am a full-time streamer on Twitch and a content creator on all the things like YouTube and TikTok. Um, I'm a lover of all things horror, and I used to be pretty good at trivia. Uh, it's been a long time since I've had a chance to practice, so today is going to be interesting, but I'm excited to be here. And also, yeah, if you're ever in Los Angeles, make sure you get brunch at Little Dom's in Los Feliz. Yeah, they have the, the, the best pancakes ever. It's the uh, blueberry ricotta cheese pancakes. So good. Uh, and I was really excited because Daniel Levy did a, um, a, I think it was like a Vogue or one of the Vanity Fair 75 question things. And he got a delivery from Little Doms during his interview, which I thought, okay, well, if he likes it, then we're on the, the right track. So uh, yeah, thank you for joining us, Amanda, and make sure everyone to check out her stream. Um, and we're going to partner today. And in honor of uh, your stream's name, Quantum Bat, how do you feel about uh, being the Quantum Batman in honor of the new movie? I think that's perfect. All right. And what about you guys? Well, it's probably not a new movie anymore by the time this comes out. But That's true. Check your local streaming <laughs> sites for whatever that is. Uh, Jeff, do you have any ideas? I think we said something about the Riddler. Yeah. We're um, not creative. We, th that's why we do trivia, not content creation. Yeah, I think uh, in honor of the Riddler, we're going to be uh, Riddle Me This, Riddle Me Matt. All right. So Riddle Me This, Riddle Me Matt. Or just Riddle Me Matt for short. Well, I'll just I'll keep the mouth full just to make it fun. All right, so we got our teams. Uh, in order to play the game, we got to know the rules, so let's throw it to the rules guy. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager zero to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. I am the cream. Wow. I mean, wow. I mean, he's been phoning it in for weeks, but today, today he read the rules like he actively hates you. <laughs> it's, it's just shocking. It's, pro uh, it's probably all the residual checks that he's not getting in the mail. Oh, oh. For, for Darren? Yeah, the, the $1.27. Uh, we tried to repay him by making him come on the show, but he just won't do it. We have been ducked. Uh, he's, he has been ducked, uh, ducking us a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but I saw he was acting in movies uh, recently, some local independent cool. films. So the Batman? The, and the Batman. <laughs> Darren and the Batman. Uh, so hopefully we'll get Darren on the show, but uh, we're, we're going to have to have Paul uh, act as a an equal or a middle nation here to, to get us you know on the same page trivia versailles <laughs> situation mm -hmm. all right well uh yeah our teams are ready um paul take it away we're excited to uh, hear your questions all right so all of these questions are from the book uh and they're helpfully in category so the very first quiz i wrote was called almost important america's vice presidents so john f kennedy was the first catholic president but who was the first catholic vice president and it couldn't be somebody who would go on to be president because then they then wouldn't that would be take JFK. Out the, right, right. <laughs> so this is a this is a problem for us. It is. A, it is a little bit of a pickle. You want to lock in with a lucky Johnson or Smith? Absolutely, lucky Johnson. Yeah, it, there could be. It's possible. I know absolutely nothing about presidents, and even less about vice presidents. <laughs> Yeah, same. So I'm just trying to think of uh, if J it's either if JFK was the first Catholic president would, and I remember it was a big deal, would um, would have one of the vice presidents after him been Catholic oh. to allow more Catholics in because he was like the, the first person. The gatekeeper. Yeah. So maybe like maybe like George H.W. Bush. Approach, That's actually maybe? what I was thinking. I think I remember George H.W. Bush being Catholic. Okay, I, that was like my only, yeah, and I, I don't know if it's Dana Carvey in my, my ear going, you're not going to do it, but uh, that's all I can think about. <laughs> so uh, do you want to go with that? Yeah, that works. Okay. So the first Catholic vice president is the current president, uh, Joe Biden. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Okay. So there have been two Catholic presidents, and he is number two. Wow. So what what is George H. W. Bush? Probably Protestant, Protestant, like most of them. Yeah. yeah I, I, <laughs> I think more presidents have been Presbyterian than anything else. Interesting. Okay. Sounds yeah. about right. So we're going to do a fishy category. Before they get turned into kippers, what fishes communicate with each other through flatulence? <laughs> like us in the studio. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's how we lock in before we... <laughs> <laughs> Neil smells unsure on this one. <laughs> Gross, guys. Uh, kippers. That's the, of, that's the type of content that uh, Amanda does not stream on Quantum Bat. <laughs> that's for sure. 
Uh, Don't look at my paper. No, I, I actually have the same answer that I was <laughs> going to go with. cheaty cheater. No, it was it was what I was actually going to uh, suggest. Knowledge you're cheating. Chester Cheaterson. Uh, well, it, Matt's, he saw me looking at a sheep, but it was actually the same thing I was going to say. <laughs> so kippers, for some reason, they always make me think of like really tiny fish. And I was actually going to ask you, is a sardine a fish? Uh, for some reason, I was like, is it a leech? But, um, but yeah, I think sardine... So sardine makes sense to me because it, when I think of what he, what Paul was saying, it makes me think of like a bunch of little fish and like kind of the bubbles coming up behind them as they talk <laughs> about the latest movie, like the Batman uh, in theaters now <laughs> and on uh, HBO Max. But um, I don't know. How do you feel about sardines? Yeah, sardines sounds good. Okay. That's all I'm going to come up with. So, <laughs> Well, spoiler, we also went with sardines. <laughs> well, you know, I think I'll take sardines because I have herring, but I think sardines ah. and herring are the same thing. They're in the same family. They're they're close enough, close yeah. enough. But I'm sure they're flatulent as well. Yeah. <laughs> I discovered recently, and I'm not going to say how, but after two years, I discovered that Zoom can pick up flatulence. <laughs> oh. And oh, not no. only can it pick up flatulence, but the box goes yellow when that happens. <laughs> so there's no denying it when it happens. It could be a, a a new area for you. You know, invent some sort of program that will block that. Oh, filter. Yeah. A fart filter. A fart filter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a category about latin american writers and artists and whatnot and it's called not literally in latin what mexican took up painting after she was badly injured in a car accident in a bus accident a car or bus matt's he, got he this his argument a on a recent episode i believe yeah i was a little salty about that uh like a sardine neil's trying to relitigate him getting an answer wrong on an episode that hasn't yet come out <laughs> okay that's that's all my time goes to going to old episodes and relitigating. <laughs> like, aha! Um, Amanda, I know this one for sure, if you don't mind me locking in. Oh, yeah. Take it away. <laughs> okay. All right. We're locked in. Uh, we're locking in with Frida Kahlo. We also said Frida Kahlo. Yes. Yes, indeed. There's a great um, exhibit opening up here, and I think it's traveling across the country, but it's like an immersive art experience. They had one with Van Gogh here, where it was like Van Gogh and 3D all over the walls, but now they have one for Frida Kahlo here. They had that in LA. I used to jog past it when I lived in a beautiful city with nice weather. <laughs> now you just live in a beautiful city with crap weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, the cake is a lie. What name is shared by a cherry cake and a strongly seasoned smoke ham? Wow, well, this isn't about video games at all. <laughs> <laughs> I got prematurely cakes. excited. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Throw some salt on me and I'm a strongly seasoned ham. Yeah. <laughs> You're a ham? Yeah. yeah. I believe it. <laughs> what is what is this cherry pie? Warrant? Yes. I was wondering <laughs> the same. Is this a warrant question, Matt? This is exactly where we need to go I think we've had this. four or five warrant <laughs> references in the last five episodes. I, I don't believe The most that. they've ever had, I think. Yeah. Their search, their search history is going to be crazy. They actually, sudden, they actually came out into my Starbucks when I worked out in West Chicago, and they, oh, they, did? they offered to sign cups for people, and nobody knew. Oh, no. <laughs> but I did. I took them all. Um, I think these warrant guys are trying to muscle out bowling for soup. <laughs> That's Yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a fight. Well, they're cheaper on Cameo, for sure. <laughs> we had nothing? I've got a gutter palate, so I don't know. All right, we're locked in with the thing. Okay. All right. Do you have any ideas, Amanda? So remember when I said I was vegetarian? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cherry cake. I feel like my bake-off knowledge is failing me right now. Um, the smoked ham, I don't... All I can think about is that Paul Rudd used to have a job as a young boy glazing hams. Um, or young man, I should say. In Canada, I'm no less. I'm imagining like four-year-old Paul Rudd just like cheerfully standing on a ladder, like glazing hands. Looking exactly as he has for the last 30 years, <laughs> even uh, at four. His four-year-old chiseled jaw. You know what? I, I'm just going to take uh, inspiration from, I think it's a Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I, I can't remember, but we'll just say Cherry Jubilee. Mm. Yeah, I didn't know. I said Cherry Jerky, which I don't think is a thing. Uh, what we're actually talking about is Black Forest. Oh, Black Forest oh. cake. Black Forest ham. I'm so and sorry. I've had that at the subway. <laughs> it's Black Forest ghetto. I've I've eaten that fresh before. Mm. We're going to go on an African safari here. You can tell Asian from African elephants by what body part, which in elephants looks a tiny bit like a map of Africa. I think we're good. Yeah. What do you think, Amanda? Um, I would say their ear. <laughs> oh, that's really good. 
Yeah, the outline of their ear, the silhouette would look like. I yeah, that that sounds good. I actually have a birthmark uh, on my stomach when I shower too hot. It looks like Africa, like no joke. <laughs> That's how I learned what Africa looked like and the mm-hmm. map instead of just studying geography. Neil's secretly from Wakanda. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, do, I, I'll go with ear if, if uh, I think it's a great guess if you want to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the ear. It's definitely the ear. All right. Well, uh, after five questions, it is tied 30 to 30. Wow. So you've, you've given us some great questions here, Paul, to uh, keep the competition intense. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Uh so I'm curious what's going to happen here when I ask this. So, because this question was a point of contention with, with the editors of my book, and I'll explain why in a bit. So a category for the birds. As God is my witness, can wild turkeys fly? So you're asking if wild turkeys can fly? Yes. I have an opinion. <laughs> we don't deal with opinions. This is a fact show. Um, I feel like this is going to be a Buzz Lightyear situation. <laughs> sense that it's graceful falling and not flying. Yeah, that's sort of where I'm coming down. Yeah. Which is like... Mm, is mm. that flying? Right. Woody was right. It's not flying. So let's say no. It's falling with style. Yeah. So the as God is my witness has thrown me off a little bit. I don't know if that's like a clue to something. It sounds familiar, but... Or maybe he's just being really serious. Or about he could be fact. serious, yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any idea on this one? So interestingly enough, I grew up and was raised a deer hunter. And oh, wow. I, I went turkey hunting, and I feel like I remember seeing them fly, but it could have also been graceful falling. <laughs> There's um, really high jumpers. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like maybe yes. I don't know. How do you feel? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I like your experience angle there uh, and that they made a movie about it. And I think um, <laughs> for me, uh, one of the last times that I ever had alcohol was uh, at a New Year's Eve party, and someone had wild turkey, and I said, I can drink half of this bottle and we'll be fine and i felt like i was flying <laughs> and it was a very bad night and i'd never once again touched uh well turkey because of the um what's that called jeff when you like see something and it gives you a memory and you like throw up in your mouth disgust P- ptsd P- i don't so, know yeah i guess ptsd <laughs> so um i'm totally fine to say yes they they can fly so i've retroactively lost my argument with, with the editors because it, the, the questions are referenced to an episode of WKRP. It was a very famous episode mm. that ends with, as God's my witness, I thought turkeys can fly. But it turns out wild turkeys can indeed fly. Mm. Yeah. Great and job, my, Amanda. My, yeah. Sweet. My memory serves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, subtitled Cinema. Satya Jit Ray's trilogy of movies follows a young man who shares what name with a controversial character on The Simpsons? We are going to lock in. Just because The Simpsons. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Do you know any um, Simpsons characters like that that he's talking about? Um, I know Ralph. Because <laughs> oh, I love Ralph, and that's Ralph, about it. Ralph, <laughs> Ralph he's not Huggin. very controversial. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, they're the Simpsons guys in here. I, I don't... Sideshow Bob, I don't think is controversial that I know of. I mean, his character kind of is, I guess. Tried but... to murder Bart quite a bit. <laughs> Maybe that's New Zealand. Maybe it's Lord of the Rings. Uh, is there anything on Simpsons of Frodo, Sam, Pip, Pippi? Is it Pippi? Pippin? Pippin's the musical. Wow. You're out of your element. <laughs> I am. I have no idea. I don't know anything about the Simpsons. So, uh, I don't yeah, know I don't... the name of the guy who works at the gas station. Oh, Apu. That's a guess, at least. Yes. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll say, is it Apu or Abu? Oh, man, I always forget this. One of them is, is from Disney. Abu, Abu. is Disney. Abu is the is from Aladdin. Okay, so we're gonna go Apu A P U. Well, I love when you back into an answer because I'm almost 100 percent sure that this is Apu. Yeah, Satyajit so Ray is from India. He's one of the great directors from there, and it is Apu who is controversial because he was voiced by a white guy. Boom. <laughs> and yes, thank you, of a Stereotype as well. Yeah, I was to say it has a stereotypical Indian accent. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, fast food, faster questions. In 1930, what fast food mogul's dispute with a competitor ended in a shootout after which the competitor was jailed? I don't remember this part of the founder at all. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to make a right crack trip. That's great. Do you just want to lock in with the obvious answer? Sure. Yeah. I'm trying to think of fast food companies that would have been around in 1930. I don't even think McDonald's was around 1930. So No. Um, and I love true crime, and I know I know this story. Um, I I want to say it's something like 
it ultimately became Dairy Queen or something like that, but I don't know the name of the original business. Oh. I might be thinking about something else as well. No, that's There's a lot of burgers in true crime, like Burger Chef and all that. That's so funny. And yeah, <laughs> it's dairy a violent industry. And Dairy Queen <laughs> has ice cream and burgers, right? Yeah. Um I mean, that's better than I'm going to get because like, they, they kind of mentioned it, but I know White Castle is really, really old. I want to say it was started in like 1923 or 27 or something like that. But um, I, I don't see why Dairy King wouldn't have been around that long either, and especially if it, um, you know, had you rem- remember something. So um, do, you want, do you want to just go with Dairy Queen? Why not? Okay. This, this is what caused A&W to split, right? Yeah. <laughs> the A and the W? Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a shootout. Are yeah. missing Wilbur? Yeah. Yeah, we. I mean, we don't know. We just said this looks like those McDonald boys are back at it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've definitely heard of the mogul. It's Colonel Sanders. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's been around for a really long time. <laughs> if yeah. you said name a fast food mogul who would have shot somebody, oh yeah, <laughs> I would have guessed that had I thought about it long enough. The the foghorn leghorn of <laughs> give me those eleven herbs and spices. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do. Prime ministers. This is this is a tougher one. I, I do think. What prime minister was born in Manhattan's Upper East Side in 1964? I don't know very many prime ministers. You have any idea? I can lock in a guess. Yeah. Okay, so 1964. Uh, two years after my dad was born, I'm trying to think of the same age wise. I think Tony Blair, um, who was you know big during uh, the Bush years, Iraq War. He would have been 64, 74, 84, 94, about 40, early 40s, I guess, during that time period. Is it possible it could be him? And if not, maybe it's Boris Johnson because he's currently in office and he doesn't seem like super old. He's probably under sub 50, but I don't know what you're feeling. Um, I have no opinion whatsoever. <laughs> okay. Um, Michael Sheen played Tony Blair in a movie, and that's all I'm thinking of. I think it was in The Crown. So let's let's go with Michael uh, with Tony Blair. Yeah, that works. Yeah, um, I didn't think it was Justin Trudeau, who's the current Canadian prime minister. Uh, I think he's way too young for that. So uh, we just said Boris Johnson. It is Boris Johnson. Wow. Lucky Johnson, finally. And given that he is a year or two two older than I am, I appreciate you saying he's not old. So that was very nice. Oh, of course. (laughs) Yeah. Not old is like basically anything under 85. (laughs) As you get older, that that range keeps getting farther. (laughs) A young spry 92 is what I was saying. Uh, Peak TV. Oz was set not in a magical kingdom, but in what sort of horrible place? Now, this is one I think, I don't know if you've seen it, Amanda. It seems like it might be up your alley with the true crime angle, but I know it for sure. I don't know if you do. I do not, and I have not seen it, but I trust okay. you 100%. This is your wheelhouse. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going to lock in over here. How specific do we have to be? Vehicular accident. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, prison is an acceptable answer. It, it is an acceptable answer. And it is going to be... Yeah, because it's a, it's a fictional prison. There's no way I'm going to remember the name of it. Yeah. That. Not, a, not a very happy, uh, fun one from... From the first episode I watched and then never watched another one because I said, oh, it's one of those shows. It's it's very intense. Yeah. 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 We're going to lock in with prison. Yeah. I think it's the Oswald prison or something. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it is, it is a prison and it did start off very dark, but then it turned midway through the run into Melrose prison. So it was... Uh, it went off the rails. Oh, I missed all the parts I'd like then. <laughs> yeah, and if, uh, if you had ever seen it, there's a very um, tough character played by J.K. Simmons, of all people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. J.K. Simmons is in it. Dean Winters is in it. Ernie Hudson, Harold Perrineau. I mean, it's... Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and uh, Ernie Beating. Hudson was actually admitted on the show to the prison because he kept saying, I'm a Ghostbuster. <laughs> Yeah, I always forget like Edie Falco, B.D. Wong, uh, just a killer cast. Yeah, so yeah. that's uh, the start of HBO's uh, sort of television monarchy there. Yep. That and The Sopranos. That's right. Yep. Uh, so looks like the first round is over. Both teams got points on that last question. And uh, it seems that uh, Riddle Me This, Riddle Me Matt uh, picked up an extra 30 points, bringing their total to 60 for the first round. And the Quantum Batman picked up an extra 30 points as well tying their uh, initial 30 points, bringing them to 60 points. So we're tied at 60. Uh, and before we get to the swing round, uh, we have two uh, Patreon supporters here in the studio with us today, which we are super grateful for. Um, Jeff, uh, we were just talking before the recording uh, just about 
how how uh, grateful we are for all of our Patreon supporters helping us continue to grow the show. But do you want to talk a little bit about our conversation that we had? Neil, you know, we were talking about how every home needs that nice triviality poster on the wall or one of our character boxes gracing, you know, the junk toys on your desk. <laughs> At the bottom of their closet. <laughs> they opened it. And and maybe just a little bit more joy in their life, like, you know, listening to our stupid crop drops, which are hilarious, and we like them very much, and really appreciate uh, the chance to directly engage with the community that way. And, you know, the, all that, uh, you know, helps us continue to make the show. Obviously, the more that we can build that, the more we can build upon that. And uh, I think, uh, you know, we're getting closer and closer to 500 patrons. We are. We're very close to, to 500 patrons. We're at about... 450 or so and we never really thought that we would pass 10 let alone 450 mm -hmm. and it's been we, five years so we were pretty sure we get one and then your mom signed up so we knew it and then yeah we've just exponentially grown since then we have and uh so it's our fifth year uh anniversary and uh, we're almost at 500 so if you can help us out uh, you can join for as little as a dollar a month uh, or if you want to join it for a dollar a day we'll sing sarah mclaughlin to you every day <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a little as a dollar a month, um, you can go to patreon.com slash triviality podcast uh, and find out all the perks there and get all the bonus audio content that we put out. But we'd appreciate uh, you sort of joining our journey to get bigger and bigger. So thank you to everyone, including Paul and Amanda for being Patreon supporters. So Paul, uh, what do you have in store for us today for the swing round? Yeah. So the thing with the book is there's multiple choice questions and open-ended questions, but there's also word bank questions and uh, true or false, and all sorts of other variety of ways of doing questions. So, uh, being uh, uh, so, 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 one of the categories we have is about uh, world music, which I happen to to love. But uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list ten acts, and you tell me the country those acts are from. So, this is probably going to play a bit harder than the swing rounds usually do, but we'll see how it goes. That sounds great. Hey, we need to learn more about international things. So, yes. let's do it. Uh, so number one, Angelique Kidjo, that's K-I-D-J-O. Two, Bob Marley. I can say if you're stumped by Bob Marley, you, this is going to be a world of hurt. The <laughs> next uh, eight here. Uh, number three, The Chieftains. Number four, Fela Kuti, that's F-E-L-A-K-U-T-I. Number five, Gilberto Gill. Number six, Lady Smith Black Mambazo. Number seven, Ravi Shankar. Number eight, Ruben Blades. I think I pronounced that right. Sometimes pronounced Ruben Blades as well. Number nine, Salif Keita. And number 10, Yusu Endur. Okay, we will go over these and be back with our answers. Okay, all of the answers are now locked in. So let's go back to Paul for the questions and we'll give our answers. So the, our first one was Angelique Kidjo. And uh, so I thought that sounded maybe like an Egyptian name. We said Vietnam. She's won several Grammys for world music or whatever they're calling the category nowadays, but she is actually from Benin. Uh, mm. I heard someone say she sounded, she sounded French and that would be the case. Uh, she's also lived in Paris. She also has an amazing cover of Hendrix's Voodoo Child. By the Ooh, way. awesome. Yes. Uh, Bob Marley. Uh, we went uh, Jamaica. Yeah, we said Jamaica. Yes, it is very definitely Jamaica. Uh, the Chieftains. We said Ireland. Uh, Jeff was like 100% sure this was Ireland. It is Ireland. Well, we're two out of three so far. So how hard was that, right? That's what uh, you're saying now, Paul. <laughs> uh, Fela Kuti. Uh, this one we went uh, Philippines. We went with Pakistan. Uh, wrong con entirely. He's actually from Nigeria. So mm. close. Yeah, he's he, he's actually one of my fa top five favorite acts of all time. And there was a Broadway musical about him. And when I was in New York, where that ticket place, you get same day tickets cheap. So I go there and say, I'd like to see one for, one for Fela. And he looks at me and says, how does front row center sound? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, that, oh, so that show's about him. I didn't know that. Okay. Yep. That's so awesome. I got to I got to see the show about uh, him, like, right, right. I was practically on stage. I was so close. That's great music, then. I, I know that music, then. Uh, Gilberto Gil. He said Brazil. We went with Portugal. He is part of the Tropicalismo movement from Brazil. Ah. Nice. 
We got the Portuguese part right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Smith, Black Mombazo. This one, we, we didn't think it was like a trick, but we know that uh, the United States is international for Paul. We thought maybe it's an old blues singer, so we said USA. I think this one's South Africa. You are correct. It is South Africa. They're the ones who did the, the track that was used on the Michael Jackson song, right? I think so. The I think Mama they worked say, with... Mama Sa. Uh, no, that's, like some, that? that's something else. He actually stole that, as it happens. Oh, okay. he, got, he, got, he got some grief about that. But I think Lay Smith Black Mombazo was also on that Paul Simon album, Graceland, from way back in the day. Um, okay. Uh, Rabbi Shankar. Um, we said India. We also said India. Yep, he was at Woodstock. It is India. So the next one is usually uh, call, said Ruben Blades, but I think the, the actual pronunciation is Ruben Blades. This one, we went uh, France. That makes sense, maybe. I don't know. We don't know anything. We said Spain, though. Probably a bit better known as an actor, but he is from Panama. Ooh, okay. Insert uh, pen singing Panama. I know. It's a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Salif Keita. Uh, we thought Saudi Arabia. Did we say UAE for this one? We, don't we know. did. So this is definitely one of the harder ones, but he is from Mali. Uh, there is a lot of amazing music out of Mali, by the way. It sounds like there's and, a lot of amazing music out of Africa, if I look at this yeah, list. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you on that, actually. Uh, Yusu Endor. This one uh, we thought could be South African. We also thought it was African, but we said Nigeria. You're close with Nigeria. He, he was big in the 80s. He's actually from Senegal. Mm. Oh. Yeah. So in something that isn't new uh, with this game so far, we both tied uh, in the swing round, picking up 20 points, bringing our totals to a tie at 80. Paul sometimes is on uh, on the crop on Facebook, on our social media, um, uh, but we also have a great Discord you can join. Um, little mistake on my part. I didn't realize being a Discord newbie, I'm sure, um, unlike Amanda, who I'm sure is really great at it, but... Um, we had links that you could join Discord with, and I didn't know that they expired after like seven days unless you switched that and you changed it to never expire. So a lot of people were trying to get into our Discord, and when I realized it, I switched it. Now it's a never expiring link, and we had a bunch of signups in a day. We had like 20 people sign up. Yeah, we know. actually want and like you all uh, our best. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> feel free to join our Discord. I'll give Jeff the link to put in the show notes, but it's on our Twitter uh, it's on our website. You can just click there. You go right to our Discord. But if you like a non-Facebook option, we have Discord. We have uh, Facebook's The Crop, our group. And if you just want to say hi on social media, you can follow us at Triviality Pod on Instagram and uh, Twitter. No TikTok yet. No TikTok yet. Or ever. Yeah, probably not ever. <laughs> Double um, plug. Uh, Patreon is also a social media platform. So That's true. And you can message us there if you'd like as well. But uh, yeah, come join us on social media. Say hi. Uh, send a message. Yeah, we always talk love to us. We're lonely. I think exactly. That's, what, I think that's, I think that's, that's the really point. <laughs> that's the shortened version. That's my the Neil question is really long, but the actual question is yes, we're lonely. So uh, yes, uh, Paul, uh, what do we have uh, for the second round here? All right, we are going to start with "Hello, New Neighbors." This is about countries that change borders or what have you. So few countries have voluntarily given up their independence, but in 1949, what Dominion became Canada's newest province. Oh, you mean the name of the Dominion or the name of the province? Uh, it's, they... the same. It's, oh, the same it's the same. It's the same. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. I, yeah. I just realized that the two I was thinking of are territories anyways. So. Yeah. we. I know a province. So how, how do you feel about Canadian provinces, Amanda? Uh, I feel very ashamed right now because I'm a huge fan of the Curse of Oak Island, and I felt like I knew more about Canada, but I'm realizing I don't. No much at all. <laughs> um, I don't think it's, uh, is it Ottawa as a province? Ottawa is the capital and it's in Ontario. In Ontario, okay. That's where I'm sitting. That's where you're sitting, Paul? Um, that, maybe that's what confused me. I, what about like Newfoundland? Is that a province? It's pretty small. A lot of history there. I don't know. I don't know if it's a province. I, I always mix that up with that one trivia fact that's in a lot of trivia things, and I'm sure Paul will enlighten us when this is over, but the retriever... Gold, or is it golden? Not golden retriever, but anyway, it's the retrie- dog name. The dog name, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. I don't know if Newfoundland's a province, but do you want to just? That's the only one. I, I mean, I, I'm thinking of the other ones too, like where Vancouver is, uh, British Columbia. Um, God, maybe it's British Columbia. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, do you want to go New- Newfoundland? Yeah, let's go Newfoundland because okay. dogs what? are awesome. Was the one you were trying to say Labrador? Labrador is what I was thinking of. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was between Labrador and Newfoundland here. I don't even know if those are provinces again, uh, but we did say 
Newfoundland as well. Well, you have a lot more Canadian knowledge than, than you realize because it is Newfoundland. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Yeah, it, it, there was a period for about 40 years when Newfoundland, uh, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Canada all had equal status in the British Empire. And then they went broke and had to join Canada. Let's go to the next question. African athletes. What Nigerian-born star was named NBA Player of the Month for February 1995, despite fasting for Ramadan? I have a, I have a name. Do you mind if I just lock one in just yeah, so we have ahead. something? Okay. I trust you. We're locked in. Um, my, my gut says Hakeem Olajuwon? Well, 95, he won the MVP, and he's from Africa. Manute Bowl? Well, there's also, for but for fasting for Ramadan... I know yeah. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf did that, but okay. I think that's later. I, I'm okay with Hakeem. Hakeem Olajuwon? Yeah. Okay. We're going to go Hakeem. The dream. That is a good guess. Um, I was thinking Hakeem uh, Olajuwon, but we ended up going with Manute Bull. Points for Jeff's gut. It is Hakeem Olajuwon. If it was for tallest player who was fasting for Ramadan, it might be Manute <laughs> He was very, very tall. I should have picked the the... Not the obvious one, but just the the one that makes the most sense because a lot of people probably don't know Manute Bowl unless you like sports, but a lot of people know Hakeem. So, yeah. or if you're familiar with that one Sports Illustrated cover or whatever that he was on, yeah. All right, uh, most important meal of the day. These is questions about breakfast. Right. Uh, in Copenhagen, what breakfast is called a Wienerbrod? What pastry is called a Wienerbrod? So, the most important meal of the day in Copenhagen, what pastry is called a Wienerbrod? Uh, I think I can lock this one in for us, Amanda. Okay, go okay. for it. You big Wiener broadhead? I've never had it. <laughs> oh. Now, I'm a vegetarian, so I've never, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true at all. I know. I just saw you ate wings for I lunch. Ate, I <laughs> ate an entire chicken. <laughs> um, so, I, um. I'm trying to think of like a, anything I can think of like a Danish pastry. A, a cheese Danish. Danish. <laughs> Is that right? Could it be? Would that be in a question for trivia questions for adults? It could very well be. I mean, I think the question's in there. Is this the answer that's in there? Yeah. We shall find out. We're going to say Danish. Uh, yeah, we just said Danish just uh, for yeah, no reason. Yeah, it's the capital of Denmark, and it is a Danish. Oh, wow. Yay. We're going to do, it's called fictional fooderies, but it's actually a movie's question. So Sal's Famous is delivered to the bank robbers in the film Inside Man, which means it recovered from the events of what film? I know this one, Amanda. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, this is from uh, Do the Right Thing because they throw the garbage can through the window of Sal's, Sal's something or other. Oh, okay. I think that's that movie. That's the, gotcha. The, that's the first scene in that movie, right? Could be. Uh, I just saw Inside Man again. Still kind of holds up. Well, we're gonna say do the right thing. Ooh, um, yes, <laughs> one of my one of my favorite uh, movies, favorite Spike Lee. Uh, yeah, that's at the end of the movie. They they throw it through the, the movie. Danny Aiello's uh, pizza shop. Yeah, we said do the right thing. Yeah, it is indeed do the right thing. <clears throat> one of my favorite movies too, actually. Yeah, really great. Nice uh, young Samuel Jackson supporting role as a DJ. Yeah. So art rock is a category of questions about artists who do album covers or whatnot who've influenced uh, music. Although he didn't create the dropout bear, Takashi Murakami designed the cover for whose album, Graduation? Mm. Yep. We can lock in. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, about, <laughs> what about you, Amanda? How do you feel on this one? Grateful Dead. I was thinking Grateful Dead, but then he said um, Graduation, which I think is Kanye West's album oh. with like, the droopy uh, bear on the cover. Sad bear. Yeah, not a fan, can't say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I agree. So I we'll go. Uh, we're gonna go with Kanye or Ye, whatever he's calling himself while he stalks people. So he's got a. I think he's a new hit single, if you know what I mean. Now uh, there's uh, there's a new uh, documentary, and I think it's produced by him, and it's supposed to show how smart and genius he is. Called I think it's called Yeezness. I think it's called Gene Yuz Y U H S. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. Uh, we said Kanye West. Yes, it, it is. Uh, the decreasingly popular Kanye West. I feel like the louder you shout about being smart, the more obvious <laughs> yeah. you're giving away the game. Like, <laughs> well, it's amazing that South Park was able to time the top of his career, and it's been uh, since Fish Sticks, it's all been downhill. To be honest, 
<laughs> How about it all of really the crap? Head. It's really yeah. funny. What about all the anime? Just like uh, South Park and The Simpsons, just like predicting so many things. No, we're not. That's not. That's not anything. Uh, okay, so after the second uh, round, first half here, it uh, looks like Riddle Me This, Riddle Me Matt, uh, perfect batting, uh, batting perfect with fifty points, bringing their total to one hundred thirty. Sorry to do some mental math there. And then it uh, looks like uh, the Quantum Batman picking up 40 points, bringing their total to 120. Ooh, high-scoring affair. But a new lead. So you reel me this, reel me that with a new lead here. We have a question. We have a whole category called Pride Lit. Per the title of Fanny Flagg's 1987 novel, what should you order at the Whistle Stop Cafe? Do you know what any of those words mean? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... One to two neurons fired in my brain, but... I'll tell you, this also became a movie as well. Oh, interesting. Of the same name or a different name? Uh, uh, I, I'd rather not say. Okay. Oh, uh, the, the uh, book and movie have the same name. I, I will tell you that. Then we'll lock in. Oh, you're going to lock in? Yeah. What do you think, Amanda? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, how about um, fried green tomatoes? Yeah, that works. Okay, all right, we'll lock in fried green tomatoes, which had a horrific scene as watching as a child uh, with train tracks that I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, with that time frame, I think that the movie came out in the early 90s. So I also said fried green tomatoes. It is indeed. All right. Thank you for uh, uh, letting me bounce off you, man, because it helped. Yeah, nice, nice save. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Neil just needs to talk it out loud and talk himself out of the answer into the right answer into a wrong answer, then back into the right answer. We're going to do measure for measure. What whimsical unit of measure applies to somebody whose face is beautiful enough to launch a single ship? Do you know this, Jeff? Yeah, we're locked in. That may, that reminds me of uh, Helen of Troy, right? I mean, yeah. I just don't know. what is there a measurement called a Troy or a Helen? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, um, boy. I feel, like, I feel like Troy would be... My guess, if I had to choose between Helen and Troy. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just go with that, because I have no idea. I, I know, I'm pretty sure it, it is Helen of Troy. I just don't know the measurement. Let's go with Troy. Should have went with Abed. I think it's a Helen. Mm. Close. So, according to Christopher Marlowe, Helen of Troy had a face that could launch a thousand ships. So, if you're attractive enough to launch a single ship, that would be a Millie Helen. Uh, oh. No. I wasn't paying attention to the math part. <laughs> <laughs> What a shame. What would one Neil measure? What would one Neil measure? How sick a person can be at any given moment. <laughs> <laughs> percentage of migraine. That's true. It's possible. The, the percentage of indoors someone is. We'll think it over and answer it on a crap drill. I'm at one and a half Neils right now. So. <laughs> so one of the nice things about writing your own book is you can slip in references to your friends and other things that are important to you. So we have a question, some a category, some juicy trivia. What brand of orange juice shares its name with a Vegas casino, which is home to an annual national trivia convention, or used to be anyway? We stayed there. We did stay yeah. there. Do you know it, Amanda? Yeah. All right, I'll, let you, I'll let you lock it in for us. Yeah. Okay. Tropicana, you said? Yes. And we stayed there, so I'm going to go with that too. Not the best um, breakfast from what I remember. I think we had to go to a different hotel. It wasn't good. Hey, I'm trying to remember that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember what happened when we were there. Good blackjack table. You were there all night. I was there all night. <laughs> we, we're locked in with Tropicana. Yes, it is indeed the Tropicana. Your pause was so stress-inducing. I was like, oh, no, maybe we were really wrong. Remember, we were <laughs> supposed to go there well, for the trivia con right before the pandemic ruined our lives. Yeah, I think it was the, was it the Sporkle. It was one month later we were supposed to go host events in, in Vegas yeah. again. and That's right. Well, that was hosted, uh, where was that one that Penn & Teller had their residency? I thought it was over That's there. That's the Rio. The Rio, yeah. Yeah. Uh, were, now, you've been to this event before, Paul, many times? Yeah, it, it, it used, it, it eventually morphed into Trivia Nationals. Okay. Um, and it, every year it was at the Tropicana, and which I have a similarly low opinion of, by the way. Um, <laughs> no free nights for us. <laughs> I don't know if it's demised or not, but uh, who knows? 
I have to say the reason I knew the answer to that question is because I was born and raised in Florida and nothing to do with the casino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. the name of their uh, stadium. That the Tropicana? Yeah. Tropicana Field. Do you have like a Tropicana tattoo in honor of it or no? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day. Maybe if we pull this game out, we'll both get Tropicana tattoos. Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> to go with your back tattoo, right? Well, it could. It might be my first tattoo. Well, <laughs> who could say? Who could say? <laughs> who could say? <laughs> Uh, so we have a question, uh, a category on Canadian food, and it's called, yes, there is a poutine question, but it's not this question. Uh, what Canadian city is famous for its wood-fired baked bagels, which are crunchier than New York bagels and have a bigger hole? Matt, you seem like our resident bagel guy. I'm not a bagel guy. I'm an English muffin man. Ooh. Classy individual. Nooks and crannies for me. <laughs> I don't want to talk um let's say these are vancouver okay bagels. we're gonna lock in with edmonton <laughs> <laughs> all right they're locked in with uh and edmonton what are you thinking amanda gosh i don't know i i honestly was thinking toronto because the cities are so similar it would make sense i i do like that um they're a big food city um they have a lot of great food places, a lot of uh, diversity, different cultures, you know, making up the sort of the city's menu. So, um, and they're similar to New York, like you said. I'm fine going with Toronto. Uh, it is, in fact, Montreal. Oh, oh. okay. Yes. Uh, Montreal has its uh, own bagels and its own smoked meat sandwiches. And having been raised on both, I was enormously disappointed with the New York equivalents. And apologies <laughs> to all your New York listeners. Uh, but your bagels are awful. <laughs> wow. Is there like a specific name or sandwich or, or one that is famous that you like? If people well, were to visit? Yeah. Well, uh, smoked meat sandwiches are associated with Montreal. Smoked mm. meat sandwiches. Okay. Yeah. 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 New York pizza is also bad. Okay. Next question. <laughs> and I agree with you on the New York pizza too. <laughs> uh, sports makes history. He won four Grand Slam tennis titles in the 1930s and 1940s. But who is best known for a match he lost in 1973? Locked in. That sports mm. head nod was pretty powerful. I felt it all the way over. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you know a ton about tennis. <laughs> a ton about it. Big tennis head. That's what we say. Okay, so initially you think about John McEnroe because he lost. I'm just thinking of people who would get very angry if they mm, lost. He's still making commercials to this day. Yep. He's great voiceover on never have I ever. Um, so John McEnroe is one guess. Um, there also was that famous match in the seventies of Bjorn Borg and someone else. It would, he had long hair and a headband. I still don't know if he lost though. I just know he was like a phenomenon for a while. Um, oh man. And they made a, they made a, TV or a HBO miniseries fake documentary with uh, Andy Samberg about oh, it's it. It's so good. Um, so just a reminder, he won his Grand Slam tennis titles in the 30s and 40s. Okay, that's no what, more clues. That's what I was thinking. That so it is someone who is <laughs> old at that time. Um, oh no, it's um, Battle of the Sexes. I just got to remember the guy's See, name. There's a movie, so of course he's going to know it. Yes. <laughs> uh, Steve, yeah, Steve Carell played him in the movie. Had great cinematography. Um, I think it was Linus Sandgren was the DP. Uh, this is played... why I don't like giving Neil any time or clues. <laughs> All right, so he played um, Emma Stone. What was his name? Wasn't? It... Yeah, it's gonna. I, I feel bad. It's gonna kill me. But I, I've given a lot of clues. I just do. Do you, do you recognize that name? Like who Billie Jean King beat during the Battle of the Sexes? I do not know. No. no? Um, and I was going to see that movie, but then I, someone told me it was not worth my time. Oh. And, I didn't and watch spoiler, it. you know who wins. It's true. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm not going to take up too much more of the time. I I don't know. I know who it is. I'm just going to say Steve Carell because he played him. Because I can't <laughs> name the real guy. That's fair. <laughs> and Steve Carell played Bobby Riggs. Oh, Bobby Riggs. He, he did indeed. Not Murtaugh. <laughs> I got to use that to remember it. Some sort of lethal weapon thing that'll help me. Will, I know. Well, will that help you? That's yeah, why I said it. Because I'm sure now he'll remember. Because Bobby Riggs was was too old for this. <laughs> oh, that's right. To beat Billy Jean King. Yeah. <laughs> Even though that's Murtaugh's line, but whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, we have a category with Asian food now. Eating beef is frowned on in many parts of India. What sort of meat does McDonald's now use instead in its Maharaja Max? Oh, there you go, Amanda. <laughs> Non-meat? I don't know. Oh, you must know it. No, I know. 
I have a guess, Amanda. But I'll, non probably non beef. Doesn't have to be non meat. I'll That's let them. True. I'll let them um, talk it out because I have a you kind can of lock idea. it in. Yeah. Okay. What are you thinking? Uh, I I don't know. I I don't know if it's like a trick question. It's supposed to be something like impossible or beyond beef, like yeah, a plant based beef. I'm I'm not a fan of trick questions. I can tell okay. you that. Okay. Yeah. Um, is is it possible? It's like Satan. Yeah. Satan sounds right. Um, is, that's like a, 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 it's a non... vegetarian protein, yeah. Yeah, yeah you just want to go with satan. Yeah, or jackfruit. Oh, jackfruit. Where jackfruit is from. That's a good guess too. But it's delicious. I, <laughs> I yeah, I love jackfruit. Um, like tacos? pulled pulled jackfruit sandwiches. Yeah, and tacos. I'd jackfruit say probably salad. satan. Satan's satan? probably a stronger answer. Yeah. Okay, that's our answer. We'll we'll lock it in. Uh, I once rode a swing round that had. Uh, different McDonald's foods that were only available in one country. And I think this might have been on there. Um, but I, I think a lot of the meat they use there is, I think they use tofu for a lot of the substitutes. So we said tofu. So you can't do beef. You can't do pork because of Islam. Uh, they do use instead chicken. Mm, oh, it was just okay. chicken. Yeah. So our category Southern Fried is all about the culture of the American South. Uh, despite finishing seventh on Nashville Star in 2007, who won the Grammy for Album of the Year in 2019? I have a guess, kind of, Amanda. Amanda, are you a big country music fan? No. <laughs> oh, me either. Um, what about I and Western? Guess. Oh, you guys both have guesses. So we'll lock in so you guys can talk. Amanda, you said you had some guesses. I had a guess. What were you thinking? So for some reason, I feel like Casey Musgraves would be a good guess. I was um, thinking, yeah, either Casey Musgraves or maybe Carrie Underwood. Oh, yeah. Um, but I feel like I've heard more about Casey Musgraves lately and to, in 2019 forward. I do. Uh, yes, I do too. And actually, uh, don't listen to what I'm saying because uh, let's see, I was in college starting in 03. I saw, and I watched American Idol, um, with, I think one of the years that was to Carrie Underwood. So that would have been too early. Um, so yeah, do you want to go, let's go Casey Musgraves. Yeah. Sounds good. Now the show in question was like a Nashville's next star or whatever, right? Not American Idol. Right. Um, this is a, a group act that I remember winning a lot of awards in that time period. So we locked in with Lady Antebellum. It's in fact Casey Musgraves. Ah. All right, great yeah. job, Amanda. Thanks. There are very few uh, country acts that get the, 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 that particular Grammy. So. All of my favorite bands are opening for her on tour, and it sucks because the tickets are way too expensive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was that for uh, Golden Hour? Because that's a shame. Uh, I, I believe like, so. Yeah, I like I believe that so. album. Yeah, actually, <laughs> mm. <laughs> and I'm not a huge <laughs> country person, but okay. Well, after regulation, it looks like Riddle Me This, Riddle Me That picked up 20 points, and Shocker, the Quantum Batman, also picked up 20 points, uh, bringing the totals to Quantum Batman with 140, and Riddle Me This, Riddle Me Matt with 150. So 10 points Ooh. is all that separates us for the final round. So what are our final round categories, Paul? They are celebrity patents. There's no business like trivia business. Alcohol eponymous. War, what's it good for? and Title IX and beyond. All the wagers are now locked in. Let's go to Paul for the questions. All right. Celebrity patents. In addition to acting and writing kids' books, Lady Hayden Guest also invented a new diaper. Who is she? So in other words, Lady Hayden Guest is known to most of us more under, a, under a, another name. By what other name do we better know Lady Hayden Guest? Uh, there's no business like trivia business. On August 8th, 2017, Bill Murray saw what Broadway musical? On August 9th, 2017, Bill Murray saw what Broadway musical again? Alcohol eponymous. What do you add to a Shirley Temple, named for the child star, to get a Shirley Temple Black, named for the adult diplomat she became? War, what's it good for? What grateful place celebrates Margaret Thatcher Day every January 10th and title nine and beyond. That's our category on uh, women in sport. May, th and this actually is one of my very favorite trivia questions. Uh, Megan Duggan and Jillian Apps married in 2018, despite having been arch rival captains of the American and Canadian teams in what sport? 
Okay, we're going to check these questions out and be right back. All of our answers are now locked in. Let's go to Paul and see how we did. All right, welcome back, everybody. So our first question up, celebrity patents. These were a lot of fun to write, actually. Uh, in addition to acting and writing kids' books, Lady Hayden Guest also invented a new diaper. Who is she? Uh, so we wagered 30 on everything. And thinking back now, we were really stuck in the past thinking about older names because of the new diaper thing but you know what they could still invent new diapers now what a, you know there's still technology uh, but we ended up saying judy bloom who knows bloomers maybe is that a thing i don't know uh and we we only wagered 10 on this one um first we were thinking maybe it could be jamie lee curtis because she's married to christopher guest the director of uh, a bunch of great movies and maybe her her mom's maiden name janet lee was hayden and that was like a pen name or something but we ultimately said, you know, we both love Jamie Lee Curtis. We didn't, we didn't see anything about children's books on her Instagram other than, you know, Kitchen Knives and Michael Myers. So we uh, we went with Reese Witherspoon. So unfortunately, uh, so Christopher Guest from the Spinal Tap movies is married to Jamie Lee Curtis. And uh, he, Christopher Guest is the fifth Baron Hayden Guest. Oh. So it, it is indeed Jamie Lee Curtis. Wow. Today wow. I learned. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Christopher Guest is in the House of Lords in Britain, which is just mind-blowing. That is mind-blowing. Spinal, spinal tap guy. Uh, no business like trivia business. On August 8th, 2017, Bill Murray saw what Broadway musical? On August 9th, 2017, Bill Murray saw what Broadway musical again? So we wagered 20 points on that. And uh, I was really fortunate for Neil because I was thinking completely different train of thought but it's groundhog day which is perfect that he saw it again the second day yep we uh we wagered 30 points on this one and we too said groundhog day yeah very clever marketing stunt uh that worked out alcohol eponymous what do you add to a shirley temple named for the child star to get a shirley temple black named for the adult diplomat she became uh we yeah so shirley temple delicious drink a lot of grenadine a lot of sugar uh, just spice it up a little bit with some rum. So he said rum. We wager 20 on this one, and Amanda had uh, the same in. We thought uh, it was rum. It is rum. So it's grenadine, ginger ale, and rum. War, what's it good for? What grateful place celebrates Margaret Thatcher Day every January 10th? So uh, in keeping with January 10th, we wagered 10 points on this one, and we said the Falkland Islands. Yep, uh, we too guessed the Falkland Islands. Yep, uh, probably the only place in the world that celebrates Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> uh, Title Nine and beyond, Megan Duggan and Jillian Apps married in 2018 despite having been arch rival captains of the American and Canadian teams in what sport? This is a movie that's begging to be written. Uh, we wagered uh, only five on this one. Uh, Amanda, I'll still let you take this one because I thought you had a good in on it. Um, yeah, I just was thinking on a purely word association basis that I've heard a lot of soccer and or football matches, depending on where you're from, being referred to as title matches. And I, that could be completely wrong, but we said soccer. Uh, yeah, we were between soccer and hockey, but I feel like if they were captains of the soccer team, I would have known them because they're generally more well known in the public space. So we ended up going with hockey. It is ice hockey. Yeah. Mm. That was brutal. <laughs> I know. That's okay. They, they they took the... That's what happens when you go all in. It's either good or really bad. It could have been really <laughs> bad. It almost was. Started out really bad. <laughs> After the final round, it looks like the Quantum Batman uh, just didn't have enough on the utility belt to overcome their opponents. They're ending the game with 175 points after picking up uh, 35 in the final round. But picking up 90 points in the final round, bringing them to 240 points, is today's cream of the crop. Riddle me this. Riddle me, Matt. On balance, off balance, doesn't matter. I'm better than you are. Yeah. Riddle me, Matt. Riddle me, Matt. Cream of the crop. Good job. Hey. Yeah. Great job. We did it. I hope you guys had fun. We, we did had fun. fun. Yes. The great questions as always. Uh, we always love answering your questions, Paul. And uh, where can people find these questions? So my publisher is super keen that you order from Amazon, but if you decide to get it from your local independent bookstore instead, I won't be disappointed. And it is called The Brain Boosting Trivia Book for Adults. 
Yes, unfortunately, that is the title. <laughs> a name that Which Paul I did loves. not pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul Paul doesn't like the the title or, or maybe some of the artwork, but the questions on the inside are all very good. And there's a great uh, mix of questions, great different categories. I was uh, glad that you uh, were able to send one to me to check out. So yeah, make sure to check out his book. Um, and Amanda, um, I had a lot of fun playing with you. I know we were very close up until the end, but I hope you had a good time. Oh yeah, it was a blast. Uh, any shout outs or uh, anywhere you'd like to have people come check you out? Sure. Um, well, mostly since I stream full time on Twitch, that's where you'll find me most often at twitch.tv forward slash quantum bat. And if it's okay with you, Paul, I'd like to snag a copy of your book and have yeah. a way to interact with my chat Absolutely. by having them summon a trivia question and we can ask and engage that what is way. Your, what is your Twitch about? Um, so I stream primarily Soulsborne games. So like Dark Souls, Bloodborne, all the really difficult oh, ones. The easy oh. ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I really like a challenge. I was not very good at sports, and I am actually pretty good at video games. So, yeah. And then I also try to promote a safe space on the internet, as safe as it can be. So it's very inclusive, and we have a zero tolerance policy for any sort of hate. So um, I love hanging out on Twitch. As far as content creation outside of Twitch, I'm focusing on gaming content and also becoming an entrepreneur as a woman so very Thank cool you. yes and i can uh, second uh, amanda's um invitation there she's a great person i think you'll you'll love her channel so make sure to check that out make sure to get paul's book uh while you're at it uh i was making a, a joke about it in the beginning but pick up a copy of my book being patrick swayze essential mm -hmm. teachings for the master of the mullet um but yeah anything else guys before we head out well if you're hanging out on twitch add the triviality mat uh, channel we're going to be doing more live trivia games over the next few months as we work out the kinks so hopefully we can get through a whole game next time without it crashing but we did finish the game on triv now so it was fun yeah the if game was finished need, <laughs> if you need any help matt i am well, an expert there you well, go. i appreciate it yeah because i do need help we may call you <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll have to have you on our, our twitch stream uh playing with us and, and helping host so that'd be awesome sounds good well, thank you to our guests, Paul and Amanda, also for being Patreon supporters. Uh, and for Matt, Ken, Jeff, Amanda, and Paul, my name is Neil, and that was Triviality. I'm so sorry, Stacey McPeak. Uh, I didn't say Saskatchewan, but we got the question right, so hopefully no hatred there. <laughs> Why? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> we got we got part of the way there. Sorry I didn't give your province Sorry, a shout out. Instead of instead of getting the right answer. <laughs> <laughs>